Yeah. The rewards of self-belief have turned me into an addict. Yeah. Girls cheating, being hoes has turned me into a savage. Before what I knew is going on, guys? Akabuk here with another video for you today. And today we're gonna be playing some more Dream Daddy. Now, last time we hang out, we hung out with Craig. We watched the baseball game and all that. It's pretty awesome. I believe we're gonna go ahead and hang out with somebody different today. We might hang out with Matt, uh, Brian, or Robert. Depends on how I'm feeling. But uh, we'll make that decision right now. Let's get right into it, guys. Oh, message from Dad Book. Ego, listen. This is you from the past. Whoa, how'd this happen? I figured you're trying to reply to this because I know myself. But this is an automated message uh, from you earlier this morning. When it was socially ex unacceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I forgot how I did that as well. The future is amazing. Listen, life is short and ice cream should always be acceptable. But unfortunately, this isn't the society we live in. And it's less and it's less the society we live in and more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged onto others. But you know what I mean. By the time you're reading this, it is a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you for going out and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Be good, me. Buy that ice cream. Buy the ice cream. Alright. You know what? I've earned a treat. On the way home, I decided to stop off and grab some ice cream, which I fully plan to eat directly from the tub. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out just which type of ice cream I'd like to eat directly from the tub. Rocky Road, Pistachio, Amanda's probably going to want some too. Better get two tubs. She loves cookie dough ice cream, right? Hey, mister. I turn around to see Ernest, leaning up against the wall of a convenience store. Ernest? You're cool, right? I'm cool, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. Well, if you're cool, you'll help me out, right? Help you out. If there's no fire involved. Uh, there's no fire involved, is there? Just clouds. Ah, okay. So if I give you 20 bucks, will you buy me an e-liquid? Ernest, what's e-liquid? It's like, uh, Gatorade, you know? Electrolyte liquid. I'd get it myself, but I'm banned from here trying to, uh, for trying to run a grift on the g g cashier. Grift? Classic fiddle game. You know the deal. Oh, if you're, if you're talking about balanced electrolytes, then I got you, little buddy. And I didn't know you played the fiddle. Just ask the clerk for blue crans... Cran... Raz apple? Vortex. He'll know what it is. Say, where's your finest e-liquid? Beyond the counter? You got an ID? First of all, my daughter is older than you. Second of all, I'm flattered. I switched shampoo recently. Is that taking some years off? Look, you need to be 21 to buy vape juice. Your hair doesn't look a day over 20. Wait a minute. Are you trying to butter me up just to get, uh, uh, to get me to buy more ice cream? Because it's working. I glance outside and spot Ernest staring at me. Double wait a minute. So you're telling me that e-liquid is not a sports drink. It's for vaping. I see. Okay, look, I'm gonna pretend that you didn't try to trick me into buying uh, you old Baphomet's cough syrup and then go inside here to purchase my ice cream. I won't tell your dad if you promise to scram. And stop vaping. You'll get popcorn lung. What if I give you 25 bucks? Go home, Ernest. As I'm walking back inside, Ernest calls after me. You can get popcorn lung from microwave popcorn, you know. I no longer trust this child, but the mere notion strikes fear into my heart. <laughs> I go back inside and complete my purchase with a good cashier. Thank you, cancer, for your time and generous hair compliments. I glance out the window to see Ernest still outside. Looks like he's talking to some of their poor sap. I guess I should go outside and save this other guy some, good, some grief. Wait a second, that's definitely a cop. Oh boy. I grab my tubs of ice cream and bolt outside. Ernest is already face down on the hood of a squad car. Ernest, did you seriously try to get a pop to buy uh try to get a cop to buy you e liquid? Do you know this kid? Uh yeah, we live in the same cul de sac. I know his dad. Listen, he's a good kid and I'm this boy's father. 
I turn around and see Walter, uh, Robert walking up the street toward the convenience store. Mm -hmm. Ernest, what are you doing? I want a lawyer. Mm -hmm. First of all, good first instinct. Remember that you're not required to answer any questions from the police officer without a lawyer present. You're this boy's father? Yes, sir. Ernest likes to lash out at me like this ever since the accident. Oh, um, I don't like talking about it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Robert gets a wistful twinkle in his eye. Oh. It all started seven summers ago. <laughs> My hair was long then. New metal was still in style. Ernest and I were down in Florida swamplands scavenging for... Sir, I can leave you the ticket from here. Oh. Sounds good. Thanks. Officer. Mm. Ernest, come along now. You'll be cleaning grout from the rain gutter for a week thanks to this transgression. The police officer gets in his car and drives off. I'm stunned by how cool Robert was just there. Thanks. I want to say... Richard? Ouch. Uh -huh. Don't mention it, Hemingway. Got in uh, trouble plenty of times in my life. Just trying to do my good deed for the day. Will you buy me e-liquid if I give you 20 bucks? Child, I will end you. Hmm. There you go. Will you walk Ernest home with me? Sure. Hey. Ernest runs ahead, presumably, so he won't be seen with us. Which is a thing I think kids do. He reminds me a lot of myself when I was his age. Uh -huh. Well, maybe I wasn't dumb. Seems like he tortures his dad. Seems like he tortures just about everybody. He even stole your wallet. What? No, he did I pat my back pocket. I pat the rest of my pockets. He stole my wallet. Uh -huh. <laughs> he stole my fucking wallet. <laughs> Why are you doing this to yourself? I... What? Oh. I have a point on my tubs of ice cream. One of them's for Amanda. Hey. I have no qualms with the quantity of ice cream you purchase. It's a perfectly respectable amount of ice cream. It's the quality I'm talking uh. about. You work hard, Ego. You're a good dad. Don't you think you deserve top shelf ice cream? But these were on sale. Yeah. If you're gonna treat yourself, go big or go home. Real vanilla bean, real pistachio. You deserve it. Oh. We arrive at the call to sec and then it runs into his home. Uh -huh. That boy is the reason why we don't have prizes in cereal anymore. That's, that's a good way of putting it. Oh. Catch it around, nigga. Robert tosses me my wallet. I catch it with a surprised look on my face. Mm -hmm. I stole it back. Mm. Keep it in your front pocket or use a chain in uh, like back in the ska days. Smile you later. See ya, Robert. I go back inside my home, ready to spend the rest of my life with two tubs of ice cream and also a madness. Alright. Welcome. You've got dads. All right, so we just hung out with Robert, so I'm going to go ahead and hang out with... I'm not really interested in Brian, honestly. Let me let me read more about Brian. Yeah, I'm Brian. I spend most of my days hanging out with my awesome daughter and thinking up of new ways to grill things. If you like fishing, then we'll get along. Go back, go back. Matt. Message. <laughs> Got a message matching right now. Take care of your health while you're still young. For sure. Instead of messaging the guy, why don't I just walk over and grab some coffee? I'm feeling really sluggish today anyway. <clears throat> Y'all got an Xbox? Amanda! Amanda sticks her head out of her room. Father! Wanna go to the coffee spoon? Oh, so you get called cool once and now you're the cool dad who hangs out at coffee shops and listens to Neo Jazz and stuff? Amanda... Are you going to bring your laptop and leather-bound journal so you can work on your poetry anthology? Look, honey, do you want me to buy you coffee or not? Let me grab my laptop and leather-bound journal. <laughs> Amanda and I make a short walk over to the coffee spoon. The place is cozy and quiet today. Just a few people hanging out and reading books in the cozy little nooks. I walk up to the counter and see a, a familiar pierced face. Hey, you were to do that yelled at a bunch the other night. Ugh. Amanda casts a sideways glance at me. He tried to sell me shirts. And who might you be, miss? Aww. This is my daughter, Amanda. The person that I am father to and am very protective of. And I'd like to make your acquaintance. My name is Pablo. Did I mention that I make the witch house music? Hmm. I wouldn't call witch house music, but okay. Aww. A piercing blow to my ego. Though not one that would dissuade my need to impress you. My innate dad senses tingle. I'm overwhelmed with fatherly protective energy. I must do something to protect my child.
Listen here, Pablo. I was very. <laughs> God damn it. Listen here, Pablo. I have a very specific set of skills too. Um, I could tap press for people my age. Mm -hmm. If so, if you so much as harm a hair on my daughter's head, I'll be coming after you at a comfortable 80 words per minute after I practice a little. Aww. Dad. Ego. Oh. Matt comes out from watching this is in the back room to meet Amanda and I. He and I high five as well as <laughs> as fellow cool people do. I see you met my newest employee at your service, although I'm only here until Vacant Veil vale starts their world tour. What's that? Well, we have to put out a record first. Oh. Alright, Pablo. Now what do we do with the customers again? Right, yes. Pablo clears his throat. Hello, good folk of Maple Bay. Can I just you in the tasty caffeinated beverage? Yeah. A smashing pumpkin la a spice latte, please. Smashing pumpkin spice latte. It's punk rock here, I like it. A classic, and you? Decaf for cutie? God damn it. Father John Misto, Americana football? Decaf for cutie. A decaf for cutie, please. Don't want too much caffeine. Decaf. Sounds like you're settling. I have a very early bedtime that I just can't miss. Oh, uh, the sound of settling is a death cab for cutie song, which was the band this was a pun off of. So when I said it sounded like you were settling, I... I'm gonna stop talking now. Coming right up, probably gets to work on making our drinks while Matt observes him. He'll get the hang of it. For a goofy dude as he is, good work's hard. Yeah, man, the concert was a lot of fun. We should hang out again. Hey. Hell yes. Hey. I'm actually gonna be done training Pablo in a couple of hours and was gonna go record shopping. Wanna come along? Dude, I'm down for record shopping. If you guys don't see in the back here, I have some records. Absolutely. Paula brings us our drinks and Amanda buries herself in her laptop. I spend my time sipping my drink and cracking jokes with Matt. Last time we hung out, he told me that he had trouble hanging out with other people. But for some reason, he and I could talk and joke like old buds. It's weird. I feel I feel really comfortable around him. Once Matt feels comfortable leaving Pablo on his own, I say goodbye to Amanda and we start walking to the record store. Have you ever been here before? No, I mean, I have a record player sitting in the living room, but I only have two... Uh, all I have here, two copies of Frampton Comes Alive. Hey. Oh, this should be fun then. We're gonna find you some good stuff. The walls of the store are packed with posters, artwork, stickers, and records. A few people middle around flipping through milk crates of albums. Some indie band is playing through the speakers. It's a nice vibe. Dover Ghost, Couples Therapy, Fake Beard, Arms Race, Sad Swears, Steady Bean, Yacht Club, Miracle. So, why do people still buy records? Isn't it kind of outdated at this point? There's a lot of people who will try to tell you that vinyl sounds warmer or more true to the artist's intent, but I really think it's just a nice to collect records. Yeah, it's cool that in this day and age, we, ha we have just about every song ever created available instantaneously on our phones. But there's something about holding an album and getting to see the artwork in your hands that I'll always love. Hey. That's why I tried to get as many records that I love in physical form as possible. Remember when we were kids and would have to wait around by the radio with a cassette tape so that we could record our favorite songs? Yeah, it sounds great. It made each listen really special, and mixtapes were even cooler because of how much work they took. Now you just make a playlist. I think the last time someone gave me a real mixtape was in high school. Hey. I look around the multi-level record store and spot some genres. Future Wave, Jungle, Anarcho Park, uh, Anarcho Punk, Nunsploitation. I have no idea where to even start. Man, this was a little overwhelming. Here, let me help you find something you might like. If you were a milkshake, what flavor would you be? Uh, that'd be strawberry. Purple? <laughs> if I were a milkshake, would I be purple? I like purple a lot. Uh... I'll go with purple, honestly. Hey. If you could buy, if you could only buy one type of candle scent for the rest of your life, what would it be? Camouflage summer breeze, spring creek fireball, power vine and cherry blossom, daffodil uh, mountain spring. Uh, I love cherry blossoms. Hey. What's your favorite 
ambient sound. Rain, bowling alley, Star Trek ambience, Howls of Bone course. Rain, what's your dream vacation spot? My backyard inside an active volcano, living off of fat in the land of Ibiza. Living off the fat of the land of Ibiza, starting a new life in the Baltics. Uh, vacation. I'll go with Ibiza. What's your deepest, darkest fear? I worry that people are nice to me only because they want something from me. I fear that I don't deserve happiness and I won't ever get it. What if nobody exists but me and I've fabricated this universe? Saying you two when a waiter tells you to enjoy your food. Mm. Now thanks for a moment. Mm. Hmm. Oh. oh, I know just the thing. Hey. Matt runs to the other end of the store and returns holding a record behind his back. He shows it to me. This is Dark Night of Soul. Dark Night of the Soul by Danger Mouse. This one almost didn't get released, but there are a ton of awesome collabs on it. Super underrated album. I think you'll really enjoy it. Oh, dude, thanks for the recommendation. Yeah, sounds great. You're gonna have a great time with it, promise. Matt and I bring our records to the cash register. A young girl with a septum ring and a buzz cut stands behind the counter with one earbud in. Usual stuff today, Matt. Hey. Just some light pickups. Matt places three albums on the counter. Swear I'm good at this by Die Sig. Forever by Mr. Skulls and Great Assist by Remo Drive. Tight. Hey, dude. The cashier rings up Matt and hands his uh, back his album in the back. She stares at me suspiciously. Who's a nerd? Hey. Nerd is my buddy Ego. Ego, this beacon of human charm is Molly. I got kicked out of art school for destroying my paintings at the end of every critique. Lovely to meet you. Anyway, Matt, is the open mic, uh, open mic night still on? Hey. You know it. Are the third waves are the third waves gonna do special acoustic performance? I might see if I can get a few of the girls together. There's an open mic night going on? Hey. Yeah dude, we do it every month at the coffee spoon. Some amazing talent always comes through. Got a flyer for it right here. Hey. You and the man should come by that night. Oh, Matt blushes. Oh. I mean, if you're not doing anything. Oh man. Will vacant veil be playing? Hey. <laughs> if only. <laughs> I finished paying for my record and we had out of the store. Man, what a trip down memory lane. I haven't been to a record shop like that since Vans had shag carpeting. I actually mention it, isn't it strange to think of all those weird little musical memories? How do you mean? Well, I think music is a very time and place sort of thing. A song is important to me not only in that I think it sounds good, but where I was and what I was doing when I listened to it. There's music that reminds me of exes, of struggling through school, of being so poor that I didn't know where my next meal was coming from, hey, yeah. all that stuff. Listening to those songs reminds me of those moments of my life. Yeah, now that I think of it, even the pop concert Amanda made me, uh, made me take her to is special to me. I mean, I'm not really a fan of the band, but hearing their songs on the radio reminds me of how young and excited Amanda was. And then that even reminds me of a younger me, going to see my favorite bands in concert with all my friends. We would always go to my friend Cynthia Chapman's house before, uh, beforehand and smoke pot in her basement like we were so slick. Her parents definitely knew we were, what we were doing. Wait. When was the last time you smoked pot? Matt stops and thinks for a moment. It's been decades. Dude, me too. Where do you even get pot now? Is that even what kids call it these days? I don't know. Hey, yeah. But I bet I can find out. Do you want to get high and listen to our new records? Say no to drugs, kids. Say no to drugs. <laughs> Matt pulls out his phone and starts texting. Hey. After a few minutes, he looks up and smiles at me. Oh. Ah, Molly's got a hookup. He says to me in an alley near the coffee shop. Oh. Okay. If it turns out it's the feds, you make a break, uh, break for it and I'll take the heat. Just promise me that you'll raise Amanda like she was your own. Hmm. You realize that weed has been legalized in the street, right? I definitely knew that. Hey. But we live in the dangerous times. You know what lurks in the seedy underbelly of Maple Bay? We could find ourselves in the wrong end of a deal gone bad. Just look out for Amanda. I swear. What? Oh, here's a guy. Coming around the corner is one of those nasty grease stumpers shrouded in darkness. It's a lean figure dressed in all black. And it's Robert. Um, excuse me, Mr. Drugman. Mm. Surprise. Oh my god. 
It's Damien's kid. Wow. Surprise, the person almost jumps out of their skin. It's Lucian, Damien's son. Who sent you? We're cool, man. We're cool. Says who? For all I know, you could be with the feds. Actually, we just le prove you're cool. What? I need to know that you're down or I bolt. Site mutually assert assert destruction. Look, man, trying to buy drugs from you, and all, and we know you sell drugs. You have dirt on us. We have dirt on you. We're into, and we're in this together now. Look, it's fine. I get it. Buzzcut Molly said you were coming. Right. Now that all the formalities are out of the way, let's make a deal. All right. How much do you want? One. One what? Hey. Yeah. Hey. He means weed, Lucian. Yeah, but how much? Hey. One? Oh my god, look here, take this and give me ten bucks. Don't just don't tell my dad. Let's all forget this ever happened. I won't tell I won't tell your dad if you don't. Lucien has me a baggie of something that and disappears down the alleyway. I open it and take a deep whiff. It smells like genuine drugs. Yes sir. That one's smooth me. Yeah, we should go off uh, public property before we smoke this. Great idea. Let's head back to my place, yeah? Matt and I walk to our cul-de-sac and stop at the gas station on the way to buy rolling papers and soda. I feel like I'm 16 again. Mm. Carmen is having sleepovers tonight, so that'll give us all the time we need to do drugs. Oh. Awesome, let's do some drugs. Matt pulls one of the records out of his bag and puts it on for us. I plop down on the coffee leather couch and look around his place. There are a bunch of band posters and his record collection takes up an entire wall. He also has a keyboard mounted on his wall. And I'm liking the look of the speaker. Stop. Whoa, what a collection. Also, I like the upstairs like little thing he has going on. That's actually pretty cool. Been collecting my whole life. It was nice to finally get them all in one place after being on the road for so much of my life. I had to ask my parents to hold on to them for me. Matt sits down next to me and we lay the marijuana drugs out on the coffee table. Mm. Uh, do you want to do the honors? Please, it's your house. Hey. If you say so. What? Matt pulls out some roller papers and sprinkles some of the beet neck tobacco on onto a piece. He starts rolling it back and forth and the paper breaks almost immediately. Spilling drugs all over the couch. Hey. Never was too good at this. Hey. Matt tries again and is able to successfully roll a nice looking weed cigarette. He hands me a letter and the blunt, I think, and I take it. Well, let's open up the nug, smoke some of that gateway drug, rip that golf fairway. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> smoke some of that gateway drug. I don't know if that's what people call it. <laughs> I like to join inhale deeply. This is not what I remember. It's been a while though. Maybe pot drugs <laughs> have just gotten more potent since the last time I've smoked. I pass the joint to Matt and cough a little bit. <clears throat> Should it sting this much or am I just a baby? What? Matt takes a hit and his eyes go wide. Hmm. That's not weed. Oh god. Oh. Did we develop a taste for meth? No, no. It's, I'm guessing, oregano? Matt takes another hit and winces. Hey. Yeah, this is oregano. I sniff the air. Yeah, that would definitely explain why it smells like a pizza place in here. That little punk threw itself off. To be fair, it was 10 bucks. Oh well, we can still relax and enjoy the music sober. You know what? You're right. Oh. We sit and listen to the Diet Sig album that Matt bought, which is catchy as hell. I look around the room again and see photos of Carmen Cedar growing up. I spot a young woman with a huge smile in one of the pictures with the two. Who's that? Uh, oh, that's Rosa. She was Carmen Cedar's mother. She died when Carmen Cedar was young. I'm sorry to hear that. Amanda lost Alex at a young age, too. I can understand how hard that must have been. I look around again, spotting a framed gig poster hanging on the wall on it. There's an illustration of Matt and Rosa surrounded by flowers. The cursive lettering reads, Stillness, the dancing. Looks like they played the sound garden. They played the sound garden over a decade ago. Were you two in a band together? Oh. Yeah. That was the reason I was touring so much when I was younger. 
We traveled the whole country in this rinky-dink little van. It was hard. It was hard to start, but once we started gaining notoriety and seeing how much our songs meant to kids, it was just incredible. Wow, that seems like a life some people can only dream of. Oh. It was, and it was difficult at the same time. I couldn't have done it without someone by my side. Rosa and I knew that we couldn't do it forever. The long hours on the road, missing our, uh, your family, sleeping in the van, all that stuff. Uh, hey. So once she came, uh, became pregnant with Carmesita, we put down roots in our favorite town to play in, right here. Since she was a kid, Rosa always had a dream of her own quiet little coffee shop. She uh, died before it opened. I'm so sorry. Oh, Don't be. I'm not really sure what to say. I couldn't possibly count the number of times I told people the same thing after Alex died. Oh. Matt gets up to flip the record. Next to the turntable. And it was a dusty uh, piano. Do you play? Oh, ah, I'm out of practice. I used to jam out on the keys back in the day. Mm. Oh, yeah? I fronted the hottest seven piece ska band that Eagle Rock Bay High School had ever uh, had to offer. Hey. No way. Yeah, the ska phase? Phase? Ska never dies. Hey. <laughs> Except for Ska Munist Manifesto, who broke up after the senior talent show to pursue solo careers. Hey. Dude, that's so rad. Matt pulls out the piano bench. Hey. Give me some of that two-tone love. Oh, man. Let's see if I still got it. Oh. Let's sit down at the piano. Go with the classic. Stick to your ska roots. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> I start jamming out a piano rendition of the infamous song that you would play at parties in hopes of getting people to like you. Hey. I don't really remember it. Mm. Uh, Cool. Oh, man. I fucked up. All right, buddy. Can you top that? I, uh, I shouldn't. Aw, oh, come on. Uh, hey. No, I'm... It's been a long time. I'll drop it. Okay, buddy. Sorry to put the pressure on you. Hey. I mean, it's not a problem. It was good to watch you get back in touch with the music that flows through you. I learned to play that song when I was 15. Oh. Man, I sit and listen to more records until it gets late and I decide I need to get to bed. Man walks me to my door. Hey. Let's never tell anyone about that right now, okay? Deal. Wait. Can I tell my doctor? I don't know anything about the health effects of smoking oregano, and hey. I think we'll be fine. Hey. Night, dude. That's my night. Damn, I fucked up. Ah, I should have played uh, the ska. I walk inside, and the house is dark, save for the sil a sliver of light coming from beneath Amanda's door. Huh. I knock. Lightly on the door and enter Amanda's room. She's sitting at her desk with her camera, editing photos. Hey, Amanda. Amanda swivels around in her chair to face me and slumps down. What well, smells like a pizza parlor in here? What? Nothing. So, what's up? Dad, I'm hungry. Ah. Wait, no. Hi, hungry. Hey. No, I'm dad. <laughs> Amanda collapses on the floor. I promised myself I'd never let it come to this. Sorry, kiddo. You set it up. I spiked it down. You're a monster. Want some spaghetti? Yes, please. Okay. Amanda and I boil pasta and heat up some sauce in the pan. Well, I boil pasta and heat up sauce while Amanda watches. Despite my best offer efforts, I'm not able to set it on fire. Hmm. Was the record? How was the record collecting? It was great. Did you know that Matt used to play in a band? Hmm. No way. Was he good? I don't know if the band was good, but he played some piano for me tonight, and it was amazing. He didn't play piano for you tonight. Hey. He played piano for you? Dude. Yeah, I brought it up and he uh, that he should play at the open mic night that's happening at the, his coffee shop. But he kind of got weird about it. Hey, I saw the flyer for that. We should go. It's not too late to start a father-daughter punk band and play a couple tunes there. Hmm. Yeah, let me break out my glockenspiel. I think I only know hot cross funds and I can work off the chord progression. Amanda and I have a nice dinner before she goes back to her room to do f to do photography stuff. I end up watching True Life. I'm a house hunter. They're staging an intervention for the house hunter who is crying uncontrollably over the color of the walls. They know they can paint the walls of the house any color they want, right? That song is stuck in my head all night. For sure. Date complete. Not that much. Yeah. Damn. Not bad, man. 
not bad, not bad, but not that good either. Alright guys, that's gonna go ahead and do it for this episode today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I definitely liked hanging out with Matt again. Hanging out with Robert and getting Ernest out of trouble was pretty awesome too. Uh, smoking oregano, that's never good. Uh, <laughs> but I really regret not playing the ska music and just going with the meme of <laughs> playing Wonderwall. But uh, enjoyed it nonetheless. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And remember... I'm going to be uploading new videos of Dream Daddy as much as I can in the future, as well as new episodes of Bully, and I believe uh, some more Persona 4 streams. Till next time, guys. I'll see you later.